Welcome everybody to I the Serpent Tarot for another pick a card reading. So today we're going to look at how do other people see you? What do other people think of you? And we're going to look at it on a number of levels. We're going to look at different types of relationships and how they perceive you and see what's similar and what's different between those. So we're going to look at your lovers or people that you would be potentially interested in that way, uh, that kind of area, your kind of romantic appeal and so forth. We're going to look at family and friends, so those that are close to you but not in a romantic way. And we're also going to look at colleagues, business partners, career sort of focus. And we're going to look at what you would expect you would be seen as <clears throat> that is accurate. And then also what might surprise you to know that people see you as and what advice spirit has all about that, about what to do more of and less of and what to sort of really manifest to to make sure that the you that you believe you are and you would want people to see is the you that the majority of people see. So hopefully this will be fun, a little bit lighthearted hopefully, but also have some interesting information. So I'll put down numbers for those that like numbers. We've got three readings to choose from. By all means, go to more than one if you want. But to help with that, we're going to use the runway tarot as the tarot for this because I feel like the sort of very stylized glamorous sort of energy that is in this would be probably something that we'd all like a little of in our life, a little sort of sense of our own unique style being seen and appreciated. So I thought it was a good tarot to use for the reading. And to help with the choice, I chose three major arcana cards that also are pretty high on the kind of look at me, glamorous, star quality, mysterious quality, whatever it is that you might be wanting to do. So this may help you choose. Pile one has the sun. Pile 2 has the moon, and Pile 3 has the star. Now, these cards may or may not actually come up in the reading. This is just to help with the choice. So if you find that you're drawn to one or more of those particularly strongly, that's probably your reading. But you do whatever suits you to choose your reading or readings. The timestamps, as always, are in the description box below, and I'll see you there. Welcome, Pile 1, to your reading. So this layout has the energy around how you're coming across to either people that you are romantically involved with or you're romantically interested in. This energy is how you're coming across to those who are friends and family. And this energy is how you're coming across to work colleagues, business partners, or anybody if you're not in sort of career in that sense, associated with your sort of personal brand and, and the more material sides of life. The first thing I would say is that there's quite a distinct difference between the way you're perceived by the three different groups. But I think these two have a very strong correlation. I'll get to the get to the family and friends, but it really interests me that those who either you're, you're interested in or who are interested in you, the sort of love and romantic energy, see you certainly as someone who is emotionally very committed to having a good, sensuous, enjoyable life and so you're very attractive on that level to them very emotionally attractive and and very much represent the good life represent someone who's sensual and and enjoys life but they think you're a workaholic <laughs> i think or they think that you have a lot of responsibilities so i suspect that a little bit in here particularly if you're having issues around love and bringing love into your life it may be that they see it was very focused on the details and the business and the work and the obligation probably as a means to bring all this in, but it almost feels like you're giving off the sense that this comes, you know, this comes later, first you do this. So I think definitely there's a little bit of a hint here from spirit that if you aren't fully enjoying the sort of sensuous, wonderful sort of loving energy that you would want, or if you're in a relationship, but that's kind of diminished in any way, it's, it's because you're coming across that you're all about the business. And this is not to say that you have business relationships necessarily as your love relationships. I mean, you could find love at work potentially with this sort of energy, but it's more, I think, that you're very focused on certain goals. And that fits over here because over here with the career, the people that you work with see you as a high risk, high reward type of person. There's intensity, motivation, passion. You're very, very keen on your career or your personal brand, all of those sort of things. You put a lot of passion into that and you'll take risks even if sometimes it doesn't have the reward you want. You're sort of someone who is really, these two together make me feel like you're a person who's on the fast track in some way in your career. 
whether it's on the leadership track or you're in a big four consultancy firm and you're sort of really moving up the ranks to being a you know, partner, you know, in a particular co- consultancy line or something like that or, you know, a political cause or whatever it is, it looks like to these two groups of people, the passion seems to be here around this sort of high risk, high reward career options or personal brand, whereas the actual enjoyment of the outcome of it with someone who's close, it feels like it almost comes a bit second. So you'll know whether this is the right reading for you because if that doesn't resonate, it's not the right reading for you. The interesting thing is in the centre, I think I can see why this is, with friends and family. So those that are wanting to be close to you because they just really like you or because they're part of your family, there's something in you. If you aren't already very well known, you're likely to be. You're, You're an achiever, like you're an achiever on steroids and very, very skilled. So your family and your friends think, you know, if you're not already famous, as I say, you're likely to be or certainly, as I say, known for what you do. And you are very collaborative. They see this as a really wonderful energy where you are charismatic as hell and skilled as hell, but but happy to share that. Share that with those that you care about. Share that with your friends. Collaborate. But I think it's interesting that they see that, but maybe the people that work with you see see maybe you as being more driven for yourself and those that you want to be closest to see you as being driven for responsibility. So this collaboration turns into responsibility. So the key message I think at first around this, and we'll, we're going to look into it with Tara, is that you're highly skilled, you're on, a, you're on a fast track, you're going to be very successful if you aren't already. And you're prepared to take the wounds. And you may in fact have been wounded sometimes emotionally because there's a misunderstanding here, I think. I think you would be just as passionate about your love relationship, but you just have a very high degree of responsibility because you know there's something central to you that's driving everything. And if you're in a partnership, you're still the star, you're still the driving force, which can be a bit of a tricky energy to to deal with and to be understood. Because I don't feel, there might be some that, that think, you know, maybe you know, you're kind of very much about yourself and very much about your stardom, but that's not what's really going on. You're trying to create something for those that you love, and you're trying to, to be the, the passionate leader in what you're doing. So interesting energy, part one. So let's see what Tara can tell us. What's, what's, what do you kind of correctly see that people see you as? What, what bits do you really get right about how people in general see you? The tower reversed. The three of pentacles reversed. The high priestess. Ooh, the blank card, okay. Blank card is only comes up in some decks, but it's you know often something like that where it's the same on either side. The King of Swords, okay, all right. So firstly, I think you know this energy in a way. Though I think you, you think of it as more than impacting sort of potential love interests. I think you think that that you know, your friends and your colleagues could probably see this. And I think it's really more the ones that are very closest to you that see it more than the others, to be frank. I think that you see yourself and think others see yourself as this sort of very, very structured, very, very balanced, very fair, very sort of like considered sort of leader who takes things step by step who make sure that all the fine print is done, who make sure that, that the business side of it is done. You, This is a big part of who you are. The in your workplace, people think you, as I say, on the fast track, they don't fully understand why. I think they look at you and they may think it's lucky or passion. I think you've got a lot of charisma and they think that's the reason. But you, you think it's really because you know your stuff. And there's a truth to that. There's a truth to it. But I think it's really only those who are really closest to you that see it. I think you may have kind of like inspire a kind of awe, admiration and a bit of jealousy around family and friends because let's face it, that can happen in that group. And around your colleagues or whatever, people see the outcome and the passion, not necessarily the precision. But I think there's something in the love relationships, people who are trying to get really close to you because it's it's almost like a thing they have to break down. It's interesting that the tower is reversed here because you resist that being broken through. So that's an energy that, that, that you know, is they see most clearly and is true so this you have a view of yourself as being very clear and that's right you think that people uh and and again apart from maybe friends and family most 
think that you're on your own fast track and you're not a collaborator. Friends and family, you have a different experience with you here. You're very generous. You're very sharing. But those that, that you uh, have the love relationships with, it's it's almost like you're trying to keep that a bit separate. You're just trying to provide for that and be attractive on that level. And you're not necessarily a team player here. You're more a leader, and that's true. But you also think that people see you as a bit mysterious, and I think that's true. Because I think that people don't really understand how you've done this. Like, you know, you could sit down and you could tell me the strategy that you use to be successful, but you're not necessarily telling it to other people. Um, so you sense that people, you, or you think that people kind of get that there's a strategy, but they see you as mysterious. And I think that that's true. And there's something, there's something changing in you. And I think it's because you're going to kind of move up the ladder even further or something. You're moving into whatever this energy is that's really going to shift how other people see you. It may, it may elucidate some of the mystery or it might make you even more mysterious. But with the blank card, there's something that is not yet, there's something changing in you, Pile 1, that is, that is going to have an impact on how people see you and how you think they see you. So I just, I just feel that it's because you're about to be very successful with something. So let's see, what would surprise you about what people see in you? Nine of Cups, the Star, Temperance, King of Wands, Three of Wands. Well, for a start, you're, you're a hell of a lot more charismatic than you give yourself credit for. I think of all of these ones, probably the one you would have found the hardest to fully understand would be the way that your friends and family see you as someone who, you know, should be a star and who's, you know, multi-talented and, and generous and all that kind of thing. You're a bit earnest, I have to say, about anything that matters to you. And the love relationship matters to you. The career matters to you, though it comes out more like passion here. Um, but you're very, very charismatic and you're very aspirational. Like other people want to be like you. A lot of people who are around you want to be like you. That's why they're trying to figure you out and they find you as mysterious. But you don't you don't see that. You don't I think you're just very earnest about what you're doing and you think it's right for you. And in many ways you're right. It's right for you and it may not be right for them, but but that's there. People do see you as very fair emotionally as well as sort of intellectually. So that might surprise you. For all and, and particularly I would say around loved ones, because I think you sometimes with partners get a pushback about you know, could you just put the sort of, you know, iPad down and stop working? You know, could you be with me? You know, we, you know, like I can sense all of this, but, you know, you're always about the business. But in fact, most people see it as quite balanced. I think it's only really potentially a challenge here. And even then, it's maybe less of a challenge than you think. Very, very charismatic, as I say. Very, very, very much a star in the making and someone that people would like to follow. But as I say, I just think... <laughs> Particularly with, with, you know, in the love space, it's like, I just think you have a very, very high degree of responsibility. And, and that's what you think people should see most. But they see instead the charisma and the sort of aspirational stuff more. And so that's why this becomes an issue, particularly for a loved one. It's like, but, you know, you come across as this star and this risk taker. But then when I get close to you, it's all business all the time. And like, what's going on? You know, like I can sense you want to have a good time, but why aren't we having a good time? So there's that sort of energy going on. So what advice does Spirit have? Let's just get three extra cards to align what you, you know, what you know of how you come across and what would surprise you a bit more to your satisfaction. Page of Cups reversed. The lovers reverse here. Yeah, it's all here. Page of Swords. Yeah, better communication with, with the one that you love, or the one that you would want to attract. Because if you're not in a relationship, it may be because every time anybody sort of like kind of sees you as sort of emotionally and sort of essentially really interesting, they also come across the business side and they think, oh, you know, that person's not interested. They're they're so focused. They're so passionate over here. There's something about improving the communication with a lover or a potential lover going on here. Now, if you are in a happy relationship, it's still I would still say that you might be surprised to learn that 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 you know, like there's almost a feeling that you're taking it for granted and focusing on something else. So if that's the case, it really just takes communication to make sure that that, that isn't misunderstood. I don't think the person feels unloved. I just think they think, my God, you're obsessed over here. That's the sort of feeling about it. So let's ask what you could do a little bit more of and what you could do a little less of to to really 
balance out any of the challenges associated with this. So I'm going to get one card from two different decks for each of them. So firstly, what you could do a little bit more of. Constructiveness. I think what the really key thing here is that it's all about, you know, how do you construct your, your thing? And you are very, in one way, you very much focus on this. But as I say, it's it's almost this sword's energy for you. It is part of you, but but it's not really what other people see. And so it's understanding that some people could misconceive it or they could think it was a contrivance. Or the person coming closest to you might have felt this was a contrivance because you're all about the work. So I think it's like how are you constructing your life? Do, do more of understanding how the way you construct your life in, impacts the way you're seen. And... Oh, chaos. Complete disorder and confusion. It's saying do more of chaos. It's like... This is it. You are you are naturally charismatic. You're naturally a star, and you really are. You're, the passion brings the stuff in. That's what's actually working. This is not to say throw out everything that you're trying to plan or do in your business because you're obviously very good and you know what you're doing. But a little bit more of the kind of like fun and chaos and and not planning everything to the twelfth. This is the other thing that could be happening actually, particularly around the love relationships because it could be that that it's almost like to fit it in with a really busy schedule, you kind of like almost diarize everything into extinction. So sometimes instead of trying to like keep everything in its particular spot and do all its energy in its particular spot, just kind of going, you know what? Screw it. Let's today just do something completely different. Or let's do something that, that isn't planned, you know, like you know, it's roll a dice every two hours about, you know, what we want to do or something like something like that opens this energy up. It also, with the high roller energy, kind of connects you to your passion. And and I think, I think your friends and family are going to be fine with whatever you do, <laughs> to be frank. So let's see what you could do less of. Marvelousness. Okay, this is the mystery. Like there is something very attractive about the mystery that you have. And I think there's a spirituality about you and all that sort of stuff. You you probably do sort of think all of this is a kind of way of manifesting what you want. And there's the magician. You are a magician. You are able to do this. But it's I think it's actually separating you a bit from people. It makes you very aspirational and very charismatic, but I think it separates you a bit. So just dial it back a little bit when you want to get closer to people, I think. It's not so much an issue over here. I'd, I'd keep it kind of in the in the, the workplace. But I think around lovers and around you know family and friends, it's getting a little bit closer, being less, less at a distance in a way would be helpful, I think, for people to understand you a bit better and also to do less of... Oh yeah, star, see? Light in the darkness, wisdom through your ignorance. Look, you you are you are a light, you are a star, but I guess what this is kind of saying is that this is what can happen. Say this could be the classic the classic layout of cards for someone who is actually a performer or a star. So some of you may be. So let me use that as an example. Your friends and family see you as a star, incredibly talented, liking to work with the best people, you know, like exciting to be around. There's risks and so and the passion in what you do in your work, you know, and sometimes it works and sometimes it's a bit of a wounding, but you just grow stronger with that. It kind of adds to your allure. But then for the people that you're closest to, it might be that it's hard because you're so drawn in so many levels to be the star and the aspiration for everybody. That's hard. You almost have to diarize in to see the person that you love. Like it's that kind of energy, pile one. I think that it's almost like you have to come down to the level in a way to some degree to be understood a bit more for what you're trying to do and this is the thing it's to be understood a bit more for people to see you as you would really like to be seen okay so what we also wanted to do is give you a divine feminine and divine masculine aspect that would be worth within you that, that you are being seen as that is working well for you so divine feminine Ma, justice. Yeah, look, you are you are very fair. You are very fair. And you do have this wisdom. So that fairness, because people are seeing it actually as emotionally and intellectually fair. You tend to see it more as planning and intellect, and you think that's what people see, but they really do see your heart. So I don't feel, even with lovers, that they feel that it's a lack of the care. The care is there. They just feel like, 
all the work and all the planning is getting in the way. But people do see like that, that sort of feminine aspect of being fair and just. Nobody sees you, even if you're coming across as this star, this celebrity type, which I think you are, nobody feels that you're being unfair about it. Remember the collaboration there with friends and family. If it was going to show up anywhere that you were being an egotist and unfair, it would show up there, but it wasn't. So I think that that keeping things in balance, being fair, is a really strong element of your personality that people are seeing that is, is worth heightening and, and keeping in mind. And then in terms of the Divine Masculine, Typhon, anger and rage. Okay. This is the chaos. I don't think this is actually about you being angry. There's not a sense that you are, actually. That's not... I mean, maybe if there's wounds, maybe if somebody... This could say that if anybody um, slighted you in the workplace, they'd better watch out. <laughs> and it's good for them to know that, that you aren't just there to be a victim, that you have the passion and, and the, you're brave enough to get in. So certainly around work, there could be a kind of a sense of don't cross me, you know, like you, you're going to regret it if you do. But I think this is actually more Typhon as chaos again. There's sort of something about the passion that is over here that your work colleagues see permeating that over here in the love relationship I think would be would be helpful you know just just mixing it up a bit you know just just making it more sort of flexible in some way so let's also ask what an astrologer might say about how you come across fifth house yeah, you are. You do come across as romantic. There's a romantic side. It's just when it hits the work. But you are. You're romantic. You're you're aspirational. Very creative. Come across as very creative. Aries. Very very ambitious. Very very. You know, first among equals. So you know, a, a, a self starter. Mars. Yeah. A lot of passion. Like you are charismatic. You are really sexy. You're all of those sort of things. This is why it's it's hard for the person sitting over here because you're also very, very earnest about what you're doing. But enormous amount of ambition, enormous amount of energy, very, 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 very driven energy. And first quarter, yeah, you're, you're kind of like things are speeding up around you. I think that you are, if you're not already very successful, you're moving into that. So this is going to exacerbate this issue, to be frank. Like it's over here, that's all very good. You say the passion or whatever. Here, your friends and family seem pretty happy and proud to be connected to you. But over here, things are picking up. Things are picking up and it's having the most impact on the, the love relationship. So it's it's just understanding how that comes across because it's weird. It's not coming across as you being massively ambitious and, and not interested. It's coming across as it's a details-oriented thing. It's a where do you fit someone in your schedule type of energy. Okay, so I think overall people see you as a star and a star in the rising in, in whatever that means to you. And it, well, it works pretty well for most, to be honest. I just think a little bit around love, it would not go astray to make sure that you don't sort of lose out on the most important relationship to you while you're focusing on the growth and so forth. So to finish up, just want to bring out a archetype for your personal life and for your professional life that Spirit thinks would be the best way to really distill how people are seeing you and, and work with that energy for your and their highest good. So personally, the pioneer. Yeah, you are you are the person who leads out. There's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's not saying there's anything wrong with that. As I say, it works extremely well around family and friends. It's pretty good around work, but we'll look at work. It, it's there too, like your people who the you know are attracted to you are attracted to that energy. It's just the pioneer that's picking up a bit of that chaos energy again too. The, the explorer, not getting so set in your ways. It, it's just it's that side of your energy. Focus on that for your personal relationships, and then for your professional. The innovator. So it's kind of the same. And that's why I say there's a kind of a connection between these energies. Your, your, your stardom, your passion and everything is to bring in the new, definitely. So, so don't, that, that is fine. And that's a good place to, to have all this sort of high roller risk-taking passionate energy. That works really well. I think it's really interesting. It's really red rose here too. There's a very in the scarlet colouring there. Like there's nothing wrong with being passionate about your work. It's just how, how you move forward with your closest relationships so that they can keep up, quite frankly. That's the only real challenge. So 
You're very interesting and very charismatic, Pile One, and that's how people see you. But don't let it cost you, you know, your closest love relationship. You know, and, I, and I'm not necessarily thinking it's going to cost it, but don't let it diminish that from what it could be because there's a hell of a lot of potential. You know, certainly, as I say, there's a lot of emotional and sensual connection and so forth. It's just make sure there's time in your diary. I hope that that resonates for you and you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 2, to your reading. So these three cards are how you appear or what someone who is either a lover or someone that you have as a love interest or the sort of people that you are attracted to and would like to have as love partners view you. So it's how you come across in a romantic way. This is how you are coming across how your friends and family see you, so others who are close to you but not in a romantic manner. And this is how work colleagues, professional colleagues, business partners see you. So <clears throat> this is interesting. The, the, the challenge, I think, is here around love. And like maybe that's not surprising. Maybe that's always our most challenging uh, kind of relationship to be seen clearly. Certainly around your friends and family there's a sense that you're very nurturing very creative and that you know you have you, you command a lot of honor and respect in your friends and family they really respect you they look up to you probably your friends see you as a nurturing person who you go to for advice they um, all see you as very creative and just sort of someone who if you haven't already succeeded in your creativity because those are both very creative cards as well you will you're sort of someone who your friends and family view as someone who is very talented in that area and or very nurturing and somebody who should be respected. So there's a great deal of respect. Your friends and family have a great deal of respect for what you're doing. Now, if there's anybody in your family you feel that doesn't apply to, then then there's, there's a different nuance in that relationship. But in, for the most part, that is the case. And if you've had difficulties in your childhood family, I'm just feeling to say this, that some of you might, then you would create a new family that was much more happy and healthy and much more nurturing and creative and mutually respectful. So it sort of depends on how that plays out for you, but certainly very, very good for friendship. Around here, around career, you're a bit of a mystery to the people that you work with. They see you as very creative. Again, I do think most of you, there's something creative about what you do, whether it's, you know, like you're an artist or whether it's just there's something very artistic and passionate about what you do. They see you as incredibly emotionally acute and someone who can deal with change incredibly well, who sees things coming, like has an almost precognition of things coming, and who initiates things as a result. They also think there is no way I'm going to take this person on unless I'm very, very sure, because with the Scorpio energy, there's a little bit, you, you inspire a little bit of fear, a little bit, bit of don't cross me, you know, a little bit of, you know, I can, I can sort of like, come back as good as I get sort of thing but overall the energy is positive overall it's it's actually uh it reminds me in a way of something that somebody once said to me that when they first met me they thought this is in my work context that I was a bit scary until they worked out I was benign and that's kind of this energy but Scorpio and I am a Scorpio so I know this energy will be benign as long as people are behaving in a loyal good way but if not they can they can show the other side so I just think there's a kind of a kind of intensity to you, passionate and intense emotions, intense connections. You probably make very intense connections at work and so forth, but you're, you're able to go with the flow. Now that kind of energy, the kind of the energy here of the really creative person who commands respect and a little bit of fear when it gets into the workplace, but also believes that they can sort of move with stuff. I think when this comes to lovers, on one hand, you're very mysterious, very alluring, but people don't know where they stand with you. And with tawny conflict, physicality, victory, they wonder sometimes if love is a game to you. So this doesn't mean this is what you mean to come across as, but I think that there's something about you because you're so intense, passionate, there's such a creative energy coming off you. I think that when it comes to those that you would be close to, you may, you may be a bit too mysterious sometimes. And you might also kind of almost like a little bit of conflict. You might be one of those people that passion comes with a little bit of conflict. But you just need to be aware that people are not sure if this is a game that they can win. So if you are finding that there are sort of issues around lovers, that could be that could be a case. So let's drill into this in a bit more. So what we're going to ask with Tarot, firstly, is what... 
do people see in you that you think they see in you that you're pretty right about? And then we're going to ask what would surprise you. So firstly, what, what do they see that you think they see? Six of Swords. Nine of Pentacles reversed. The Empress. Some of you, you may be a mother or a, or a parent or have a very strong nurturing role with this sort of coming up. Queen of Swords reversed. Ace of Cups. Okay, all right. So... These are things you know. You know that people see you in many ways as nurturing, as creative, as as a sort of source of nourishment to people, particularly your friends. I think it's interesting it fell here right at the centre there. So I think you're pretty accurate, actually. What you think your friends and family think is pretty accurate. And for some of you, I'm getting, you might have had to take on a nurturing role really quite young in life for some reason or other, you know, being the eldest sibling or something and, you know, a broken family or that's just an example, but I think there's there's something about a kind of nurturing motherly, without it being necessarily gender based sort of energy that you have, that that you know that you exude, and people do see you that way, and you're right that they do see you that way. They also see you as someone who's very connected to other people. You don't stand too aloof from people. You you really do. You have this sort of connection. Your connections, your friendships, like particularly around your friendships and family, they know you're there. You're there to connect. Again, it's maybe lovers may not feel quite the same way because here when we have Ace of Cups, which is where the love relationship is, we've got the Queen of Swords reversed. So there's a, there's a different side, which I think also picks up a bit of the Scorpio sting. So this is probably both at work and also with lovers. I think that you kind of know in a way that people don't know where they stand entirely and that may work really well and work, but it could there could be an issue. It just depends. If at the moment you're not looking for a serious relationship, that's fine. Have fun. But, but you know, you, you may think that people think of you as being a very hard taskmaster in a way around love. And maybe some experience that is like, where do I stand with you? But, but it's true. There's sort of something there where people who have their heart open to you on that level are a little bit scared of you, to be honest. But you, you know where you're going. And like, and this is like the career stuff, you know where you're going, you're very calm about that, you're very calm in the flow of water, like literally this, this figure sort of like dress is turning into water and that's like the aquamarine here. So, so people, you think people see you as knowing where you're going and being calm and confident with that and that's right and people do see that. So, and you do see key people are seeing you as being nurturing and very much for other people, but you do know that some people, probably lovers, are a little bit more wary of whether they're meeting your standards or, or what's going on intellectually with all of this. So let's see what would surprise you that people think of you. Page of Pentacles, Ace of Swords, the Devil, <laughs> Ten of Swords, Three of Swords. Okay. All right. So people think you're quite magical, like whether it's lovers who think that or whether it's a creative energy here or whether it's this Scorpio energy there. The people think that you are that and that you are likely to be very successful in big organizations and that you're kind of addictive and you can draw people in. So very sort of alluring on that kind of level. So they, they definitely, but you don't see to what degree they are kind of seeing it as a kind of addict, addiction. So, and, and how mentally challenging is this is, this is lovers, how much there's a fear of separation. Like, I really think this is telling you something that like, there's something about particularly around lovers for you where, where they, you are mysterious, but people think it's a game and they get addicted to it. And they feel like they kind of get, they get obsessed with you. Like people probably do get obsessed with you in relation to this but it's really mentally straining for them. So if there's someone you really care about, again, it's sort of like, you know, if you're just kind of dating and you're having fun, maybe it doesn't matter. But like if there's somebody that you really care about, you need to be aware that, that there's something addictive about this kind of, they're not sure, this mystery that's there. In, in terms of work, if you're a leader, you might be thinking you're going with the flow, but there's something about you that's making people worry whether they're going to take the wrong step or whatever. So it's important to know, like this sort of feels a bit in work, like someone who, 
who you know maybe is in a very tough and competitive environment and they're used to sort of being tough and competitive and giving feedback in a very tough and competitive way but what's happening is that people are kind of shutting down if that's the case and if the scorpio sting is coming out too much you're getting in the way of the flow and the passion so I don't, it's not going to be for everybody, but for some people, there might be an energy there as well too that you're not really aware of and that people might leave. Like with the three of swords, it's like what could happen is if people have felt enslaved to something with you, then they may just suddenly say that's enough and go. So it could surprise you. If people suddenly leave your life, this is why. And I don't think it's, it's that you are meaning this, but I think it's you're not actually understanding the, the, this impact that this is having on people. The other thing that would surprise you is that there are certainly people, whether it's work colleagues or, or any of it, that think that you're very good at business and an enormous innovator. Like this is the creative energy. It's not just the nurturing. You're very innovative. And maybe you're not even, because you're so much a change person that you may not even be realizing that. And you may be very creative without, without really crediting yourself with that kind of innovative side of things. So let's get three cards to ask what you could best focus on to align any of the areas here that, that you wouldn't want to be thought of in that way, you know, to be more how you would want to be seen. The Chariot, Eight of Pentacles, Two of Pentacles reversed. So, interestingly, I don't know whether at the moment you're that worried about this and that's fine if that's the case. It's like, you know, like if you're just in that kind of casual state or if you're around people and you're thinking they're fun, but they're not the long term, then that's fine because this looks very much like at the moment, the main thing that's important for you to focus on is what you're going to create, particularly, I think, in a business wise and really showing what some of your skills are and the momentum you want and making a choice. So I think what might be going on over here is that you're kind of just going with the flow with different sort of creative ideas, but it's time to kind of dedicate yourself to one of them. And that will kind of give an anchoring. And if this is about people not being sure about whether they're going to fit in or be what you want, it will give them the clarity so that you don't lose the people that you wouldn't want to lose from your, your workplace. Uh, I, I don't feel like this is particular. I don't think it's an issue around your friends and family. If this is picking up love, I just don't think it is particularly, but if it is, it's like, it's like using your skills in a different way, not to be like, not to be kind of like kind of always unwilling to make the decision. So if there is a significant person that you would like to move forward with in love, or if you're with someone and you're feeling like you're always in conflict, then then use these skills that you have to, to help you make the decision about what to do about that, because you're confusing the hell, if, if not, out of this person around you, I think. Okay. So what we're also going to do is we're going to use a couple of decks and we're going to ask firstly, what could you do more of that would help your the way you're viewed by others fit with how you would want to be viewed? And then also, what could you do less of? So firstly, more of. Conscientiousness. Oh, yeah, it's like... I don't think it's a problem around friends and family at all. But I think that there is something, it might be a little bit in the, the workplace, if you're going so much with the flow and not making a decision about what to commit to, it might be like, you just got to commit to something so that the people who are with you and want to follow you can do that. But if this is around love relationships, it's like, what, what are the ethics of it? You know, and if you are, if you're just having fun with other people who are just having fun, that's fine. But if you're dealing with someone that you're really close to, and this sort of energy is there, then, you know, you need to sort of maybe be a bit more conscientious about it. A little bit of tough love here, pile two, but it's so that you have the love that you want. I'm not, I'm not doing a moral, you know, assessment here. I'm just saying, you know, to get what you want because you're coming across as sort of someone mysterious and hard to, to pin down and kind of always in conflict with. And most people don't want that in their love life and they should just having a good time. But certainly a little bit, being a little bit more conscientious could be helpful. And... Autumn, period of maturity or beginning of decline. Now, I don't think this is about decline, but I think, yeah, this is about, this all matters when you want to have a serious relationship. If you're not in that space at the moment, it doesn't matter. But at the point of maturity, when you need it, you need to think about these things, about not being so mysterious, not playing games, not being sort of conflict to test it out, being more, more the energy that you have here, which is nurturing and caring and collaborative with you know and respectful that you have with family and friends 
So I think, and but I think it's there. I don't think it's so much over in the work environment. Let's see what you could do less of. Eventual, eventuality. Okay, all right. This is, yeah, there's definitely something, I think, and this I think is more, I mean, it's a bit over here as well, but it's more here, I think, which is that you go with the flow and you're so interested in so many different ideas, sort of like they get you intensely interested and passionate about things and you go with the flow, that you're not, you're not grounding what you want to do. So if you really want to be seen as this sort of creative person, the person that, that commands respect that your family and friends see, but in the workplace, then a little bit less of the curiosity and wanting to be trying everything and a little bit more of focusing on what is the real outcome that you want. And again, it's a similar thing over here. It's like, it's, it just feels like at the moment, you know, it's, it's almost like you're kind of with someone or you're going out with people until you find what you think you really want in the longer term. So again, it's okay in this space of your life while you're just experimenting, but at some point, you know, like finding the one or, or if you are, you think you are with the one sort of, Making it clear to them is important. And also what you could do less of. Let go. Release negative feelings holding you back. Well, I don't think it's so much about releasing. Mean, we all could all could do with releasing negative feelings. But I think you may let go of things too quickly. I don't think you do with friends and family. Like I think you're as loyal as hell there. Like if a bit of this could bleed into other sides of your life, you'd be perfect. Or people would, would see that. But I think you may like kind of let go um, of relationships before you've really tested them out. And you might let go of ideas here before you've committed. So there's a kind of a sense of needing to, to kind of almost make a choice and settle for something in those aspects of your life. And it will really shift how people view you so that it moves towards what you want, which is I think is more like this sort of center energy. Let's also see a divine masculine and a divine feminine energy, start with the divine feminine, that you are coming across as that is working well for you and you could do more of. Yamaya, hope. Okay. So this is an energy of hope and of inspiration. Like that bit is working well. There, I think it particularly works well around family and friends. They see you as nurturing, caring, respectful, creative. You kind of inspire them to do things. And there is an inspirational side here. And there is a kind of a mysterious, interesting thing. So everybody comes to you very hopefully, I think, Pile 2. They, they come to you thinking you'd be a wonderful, inspiring leader or person to work with. They think that you would be incredibly intoxicating, like almost addictive as a lover. And they think that you will be really respectful as a friend. So the more that you can, I think, make sure that the hope is equal across all of these, because I think you've got it perfect in your friendships and family sort of relationships. I think that's really the main thing to, to not make people feel insecure, because I think this is the thing. I think you make not friends and family, but other people around you insecure in some way. So keeping that hope you know, sort of alive would be good. And then in terms of divine masculine energy that you are perceived as that is good. Hypnos, sleep. Yeah, you're addictive, all right. Wow. So it's not saying don't do that. This sort of like scorpionic, sort of mystic sort of energy with the devil card there and all that. Like, it's not to let go of that. It's part of your allure. It's just that I think friends and family, because of the nature of those relationships, are more comfortable in that space with you. So they'd find the hypnotic side of you entertaining and nurturing. They'd find the sort of like creative side of you hopeful. But I think for lovers, it's like, can I trust what's going on? Am I being deluded? And for workmates, it's like, do I really understand what's going on? You know, can I, can I do something productive here? So it's just understanding that energy of your allure and how different types of relationships operate with that. So let's see what an astrologer would say about you. Fire. Yeah, you're very, very passionate. That, that, that side of things that particularly shows up around work would show up very strongly in your chart. It might be a fire sign or an earth sign with Taurus here. You like the good life. You like a good time. And you're very loyal and devoted when you when you know what you want <laughs> or when you're sort of in those relationships that don't draw those different aspects out 
Pisces, underneath. Yeah, this is the psychic sort of stuff. I think a lot of this might be hiding your own, your own sensitivity because you feel safer in these relationships, I think. So some of this, some of this is a bit of artifice to sort of hide away who you really are. And mutable, you know, you can change, you can be flexible. All of this is possible. And I think it's, it's obvious in a way because it's working perfectly around friends and family now. As I say, whether it's your entire extended family or whether it's a family that you've made yourself. And if you are in a happy family and love, there's still something, it may be, it may be just people who are, who are attracted to you that you're not even going to have a relationship with, in which case being a bit mysterious to keep them away if you're happily sort of ensconced in a relationship is good. But on the other hand, if the closest person to you is sometimes wondering if they, they know what you're changing into, particularly with career, then you need to kind of reground that and not and not see it as a kind of a game or think that they should just understand. Okay, so to finish off, we're just going to get an archetype that would best show, you know, that the best version of you that other people could see personally and then professionally. So personally, the jester. Okay. Maybe yeah, a little bit more humour, a little less mystery. Lighten, lighten it up in that way. I think people get really addicted and very earnest with you. So like a little bit of fun rather than the conflict and the mystery. That could, that could help. And it's a way to tell them the truth. So if the truth is, you know, like I've been having fun, but it's not the long-term relationship, then you can like kind of lighten it up to allow that to happen. Similarly over here, if, if you know, you've been like toying with a lot of ideas before you decide what to do with your career, it's kind of like, this has just been fun and have a bit of a joke and and that sort of thing, that would help with your professional sort of persona and how people are coming across. The archetype we get is the ancestor. Some of you may, may have family connected workplaces, you know, family businesses or something with that. If not, there's a wisdom there. It's the same wisdom that's coming across here. So, so maybe let people know that there is this sort of solid background to what you're doing. It's not all, and that you're exploring with that sense of a solid background that you can then commit when it's, when you really know what to do and that people should go on the flow with you and the creativity with you because you really do know how to navigate this. It's sort of giving that sense of gravitas to the charisma, I think. So part two, interesting. I, I do think that the main challenge is probably around love and it's a challenge that you can you can change if you find that challenge is working. And if it's surprising to you, it's just maybe worth thinking about whether this could be the way it's coming across to people because it's probably not your intent. I don't get the sense here you're far too loyal for that to be what you intend, but it could be because you're just having a good time at the moment and that's fine. And over here it could be because you're sort of really intense on what you're doing, intense on the idea and other people like a little less secure than you. But other than that, I think, I think that you're doing well. It's just a matter of being aware of how people could be responding sometimes. So I hope that resonates for you. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome part three to your reading. So these three cards are around what either a current lover or a love interest or the type of people that you tend to fall in love with and want to fall in love with you may see you as. This is friends and family and this is work colleagues. I've got to say, I think if you've come to the right reading, I'm going to, I'm going to call this really early. If you've come to the right reading, you have had some issue with friends or family and it's had an impact, I think, on your love life. Not so much on your career. And in fact, it may even be because of jealousy uh, and because you look very successful with your career. You know, you're on the fast track. If you're not sort of CEO level, you're on the fast track to something like that or something very creative, being a leader. You have inside illumination, reflection. You shine. You shine in this area. There's not a, That is really, really going places. But I think that you've either got friends or family. I'm feeling it could be family. There's jealousy, I think. And... I think it's coming from female energy in your family. If it's not family, it's friends. Because teal here, creativity, pregnancy, sacred feminine. There's something about the sacred feminine. But when we've got saboteur here with air, there's like someone who's like trying to gaslight or someone who 
or who wants to accuse you of doing that. But I don't think that's what's happening. I think that there's a lot of projection operating, if that's the case. Um, but there's something. There's something that is tricky around friends and family. And, and it could literally be impacting lovers or it could be that, that there, is, there is something about your, the way you shine in this area of your life that is impacting both these areas. Because here, like you come across, like on one level, you're incredibly attractive to, to you know, the potential lovers or the lover in your life. You know, like you're seeing here, rare, uncommon, unique, beautiful. Like there's a lot of beauty about you, the maiden and beauty. You, you know, like sort of exciting, all of those things. But numb, I think like it's like either, it's probably you. I mean, this is how you're seen. It's like it's there, but it's unawoken. And you're, and you're almost like something. Something has happened to you that has made you withdraw. So I feel like you've had, you know, some gaslighting around a relationship or you've had, you know, jealousy from friends or even siblings or something like that. And while you draw in this, you're incredibly romantic, but it's almost like you're shut down. Like those who want to get close to you are kind of like finding you're shut down. And if you're in a relationship, it's like you've kind of withdrawn, but I think it's got to do with what's going on here. So this is very specific. So I think you'll know if you come to the right reading. Certainly, as I say, working colleagues is fine, but I almost feel like it could be that you are so successful here that this is stirring a jealousy that's then playing out here as well. But this is either really major sibling rivalry and projection and gaslighting from a fe feminine energy. It doesn't have to be a woman. It doesn't have to be someone who identifies as a woman, but it's a feminine sort of energy. Uh, yeah, so it's either that and family or it's, it's, it's with friends. And I think it's affecting here. It's making you be very wary about any kind of relationship. So, okay. So I'm sorry to see that, Palfrey. That's, that's hard to deal with. So let's, let's get a bit more detail. We're going to ask firstly, what, what do you think people see you as that you're right about? Like, what do they see you at that you would go, yeah, that's right. You know, that, that, that makes sense to you. Oh, I've got the blank card, so that's where it's either side. So there's a mystery. Okay. Five of Wands. Ten of Pentacles. Seven of Swords reversed. Six of Wands. Okay. There's a mystery. Not everybody knows. You know that you're hiding or keeping a lot to yourself. This is this numb energy. Like people who are trying to get close to you and love, there's something that you're keeping very hidden, very mysterious. If you're dealing with conflict and I think you are particular I think it's around your family I really do think it's family I mean it could be friends but it feels like family and you're really realistic about this like they, there might be some projection saying that you're doing this but you're actually really honest but there's something there's conflict around family sibling rivalry that kind of thing as I say if it's not family it becomes friends as a, a broadened family but for most it's around family and you know it's there and you know that you're right but you also know that you're seen as always fighting always fighting back, always always saying, no, that's not right. You could be in like a narcissistic family dynamic and you're the kind of truth teller or something with that sort of energy. And it could play over into your into your friends or it could be that your friends have become your family as well because that's a positive card normally. It's just that it's interesting that it's like these mental games that you're having to play in this conflict. I think this is all around that. And as a result, you withdraw, you become very mysterious but you do see yourself as successful and other people see you as successful. And you kind of know this is connected in some way. And the more successful you are, the more this rubbish is going to happen and the more that you kind of withdraw emotionally. Okay, so let's see what would surprise you about how people see you. King of Cups, Knight of Swords, Queen of Pentacles, Eight of Swords, King of Pentacles reversed. Okay. Ultimately, I'd say the friends that are good friends, I mean, if there are, if there's this sort of dynamic going on with some friends, they're not good friends. So let's say good friends, good family members, anybody who is good on that thing uh, and any sort of lovers who sort of like, you know, or people who are attracted to you, see you as having an enormously beautiful heart. So... Apart from those that play the mind games, people see you as very emotionally beautiful. This is this sense, like a very rare heart, like very, very attractive romantically, definitely. 
but maybe king of cups is sometimes like chiron the wounded healer you know it might surprise you how much people realize there's some woundedness that you're that you're kind of like hiding you're trying to hide it completely but it's not completely happening people think you're very smart too i mean in one way that shouldn't surprise you because you're successful but i think they they do see you as sort of like being able to make decisions and get on with things and and you know very likely to be incredibly well off and all that kind of thing a great provider and so forth so and if any of this dynamic is with your mother then then it might surprise you how much other members of your family and or friends see you as being the much more committed uh, and genuine figure like that with again it doesn't matter what your gender is or you identify with but they do think you're trapped in mind games and they do think there's at least one person around you or maybe just the sort of structures that are around you that are not working for you and in fact they think that there's a possibility that that could bleed over into your work with the coming for king of pentacles so I think they think that you should be taking whatever this is and establishing yourself in some way because they think that you're a little bit trapped. I mean, some may even think you're a little bit trapped by your success, but it's it's the ones that are thinking about this, I think are thinking in your benefit and they're thinking about how you consolidate yourself because they see you as, as deserving a lot more emotionally. So, And I, I feel like this might be a love interest potentially who can see what the wounding is and can see all the wonderful potential you have, but feels that you're trapped, trapped in sort of family dynamics, trapped in, trapped even in the responses, I think, to your success. Okay, so let's ask the three cards for some advice from Spirit about how to really align how these people see you in a way that you would want to be seen. Three of Pentacles, the star reversed. Knight of Pentacles rest. It's definitely saying dump some of your friends or those sort of like in your connection that are not able to sort of, not able to let you shine. You don't have to be committed to the wrong people. I don't actually think your lover is the wrong person or your, your love interest or, or something like that. I just think that, that you know, you, you're kind of a little bit detached and until you've, you've kind of like divested this energy, whatever this is, and not being loyal to that, I think you are a very loyal person. And if this is family energy, it's hard for you. It's hard, but there is something like that going on. And it could even be projected on you. Like you could be being told by people, oh, you sabotage things, you self-sabotage, you sabotage others. But you're not actually doing that because you're just getting on with your life. But it's really made you kind of withdraw back a bit. But this is just saying, like, only keep those in your life that are true friends, true connections. Dump the rest. They're getting in the way. <laughs> I know that sounds a bit brutal, but it's it's... I think this is a brutal sort of energy pile through. And as I say, I'm really sorry to see it. So let's ask with a couple of decks what you can do more and less of to align how you're seen with what you would want. And I think in this case, to have the right people around you and sort of family and friendship dynamics. So what you could do more of. Weight, equilibrium. Okay, I think it's way up, way up things. Find where there's the equilibrium. Find where there is a true emotional response. And find where things make sense because I feel like this this would like, you know, if you were trying to weigh this sort of like mind games, you'd, you'd sort of see there was no real depth to it. There was nothing to it if you really started to look at it. And don't give things apportionment. Don't give anything more than it's due. Like I think this is a real energy where you could either be with or draw in someone who really sees you as enormously special, special and lovable. So don't give this energy a due that cuts you off from that. This, I think you've got pretty much well balanced. But there's something here. So what else could you do more of? Explosive. Yeah, you might need to just tell them where to go, to be honest. <laughs> I, yeah, really, I, I just think that there's some people you've just got to go, no, enough is enough. I'm not going to play those games anymore. I'm not getting into that sort of mind stuff. It's, I'm just not going to. But sometimes you just need to do that. And if there is if there is someone who's like that, like kind of like getting a better balance in how important they are in your life or how unimportant they should be, then what could you do less of? Time. 
I think I think that you, you're kind of hoping this will work itself out and it's giving it time and hoping whoever they are would sort of stop doing this. It's not going to happen. This, there's a lot of jealousy and a lot of resentment in this energy and the more successful you are, which I think you're going to be, the more it's going to happen. And if you think just time is going to sort this out, because if you don't sort this energy out, it's going to have you know, be more and more important in this so so don't just think it's going to sort itself out i think you really do i mean you don't have to have a huge fight with people but i think you just need to put some boundaries up what else can you do less of luck good luck coming away relying just on luck and on time yeah i think this is saying that you're hoping i mean you are very successful here and if you really looked at how you're successful here and you applied that to other things you wouldn't put up with this rubbish at work. You just wouldn't. You know, in your career, you're kind of like you're very go-ahead. And you wouldn't think you're successful because of luck. But it's almost as though dealing with this, you're hoping to avoid any kind of losses or whatever. And as such, you're, you're relying on luck and time. It's not going to sort it out. And it's just having this effect. Okay. So let's see what divine feminine and masculine aspects you have that are coming across that are working for you. And that you could really emphasize. So... Divine Feminine. White wo Buffalo Woman Peace. Okay. So this works in a couple of different ways, I have to say. One is that this story of the White Buffalo Woman is that she demanded respect when, when people came to, to her culture. They didn't necessarily respect her at first and they suffered for not respecting her. But then after that, people did respect and there was peace. So I think that this is peace through clarity and peace through standing your ground, peace through demanding the respect. You're not getting the respect you deserve. It's what you would, would demand and get naturally and effortlessly at work. You need to demand there. That will then, because the respect is there in the relationship, but you're withdrawn. You're withdrawn. Like it could well be that some of this is, you know, family or friends trying to tell you that, that you're, you know, you're a work person, but you're not a love person. You really are. But like it, you've just got to demand that respect. And if people don't give the respect, then, then, you know, move away from them. You know, don't, don't always give in for the peace, so to speak. Make the peace work for you. And then in terms of divine masculine energy. Helios, cycles. I think this is like the energy that you bring to your career. I think you can see the cycles, you can see the ebbs and flows, you can see when you consolidate and when you're passionate, you can, yeah, all of that kind of stuff. You've got that really, the kind of cycle that you look to this. And like, and I think if you look into some of the work patterns, you'll see some of these sort of little dramas playing out in other ways and you see how things work their way through. You can do a similar thing there. Just sort of feeling, also, you know, Helios is like the sun, like, you know, letting your sun rise, you know, and don't let anything get in the way. This this energy would try and make it be the moon all the time. Make sure that you allow yourself time to rise, not not to sort of like kind of, you know, sleep, not to sort of like be hypnotized or whatever. So I think it's understanding what's working there and applying it over here and then distilling what is working in friends and family and moving the rest out. Okay, so let's see what an astrologer would say about you. In terms of how you come across earth you're very grounded you're very good at this side of things the people are trying to get into your head mutable and you're flexible and i think the people who are not not fair to you are trying to use that but equally you can use that you can decide what you're going to have in your life Second house, yeah, you're here to make money and do do well, but it's also a lot in alignment with your with your values and so forth. So don't let other people influence that. And waxing gibbous moon. So the waxing gibbous moon is about synthesizing and integrating lessons. Don't have a hard time on yourself about this. Just learn from it because it's going to release this energy to be what it's meant to be, and you're doing fine over there. It's like it's just lessons. It's all part of like being more and more successful and being more and more seen how you would want. So to finish off the reading, I'm just going to draw an archetype for how you could best be seen sort of archetypally, personally and then professionally. So personally, this is, you know, like what you should be kind of aiming for that is, a, is in alignment with how you're being seen now, particularly when you get rid of this rubbish. 
uh, and and you know your own personality and so forth, and and the same for professional. So personally, the jester. That's interesting. It came up for another one. I think this is like trying to almost. If this is really heavy, just make light of it. Just satirize it. The jester is also one of the most powerful people in a medieval court because they can tell truth to power. So you have power. You understand power. It's it's understanding this dynamic. And I think yeah, satirizing it. That, that would prick the balloon of this sort of energy so quickly. And it also, if it's here, if you're feeling withdrawn, maybe just through having a little bit of fun and laughing about things is a way to kind of wake up and, and reconnect with someone that you want to connect with on that level. And professionally, the self. Yeah, you're meant to be the leader. You're meant to really show who you are. You're, this is where your blueprint is, actually, pile three. And it's why this is happening. And I think even from, like, if this is in your family, even from when you were young, it was probably pretty obvious to somebody who didn't like it in your family that you were going to be successful. And there was almost like a, a campaign to, to dissuade you from thinking that. But you've made it anyway, um, or you're in the process of making it anyway. This is a very, professionally, you're really going to come into your own. But you need to understand what that does here so that you don't listen to people you shouldn't listen to. And that way... You can have more fun in your love life. So it is a little bit of a heavy message, Pile 3. I didn't expect it to be quite that heavy, so I'm sorry. But but I would say if you've come to this reading and, and it resonates, you were meant to hear this so that you would understand this dynamic and not let it hurt you anymore. So I hope it was helpful. And to the degree possible, I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings.